Nick Sprouse. I work here at uh, Byhower Brothers Drilling. Um, been here for a little over eight years now. Um, to come and talk to you about the Ohio Water Well Association. We had an outdoor demonstration in June, 13th and 14th. Uh, we took the Jeffco 40K down there to drill it, the top head rotary. Uh, we did it with this traditional mud tub and four by three centrifugal. Um, drilled to a depth of 96 feet, uh, right about there. Set, I believe it was it was eight foot of screen in, in um, a little over, I don't know, nine or 10 foot of formation. Um, going off of memory, so don't hold me to all that, but uh, what we did, we, we had it flowing 350 gallon minute over the top. Um, and what all went into that was a lot of preparation. We started talks at this show two years ago. Um, ended up not having enough time, didn't want to put on a haphazard show, so we postponed it to 23. Uh, a lot went into it. There was five or six different companies doing work on the field. Um, Jaeger Well Drilling, Bushong Drilling, Smith Well Drilling, Watson Well Drilling, Moody's of Dayton. Um, if I'm forgetting anybody, I apologize, but all of us essentially worked together for the first time that day. And what was unique about that site was on top of the hill, there was about a 90 foot elevation change from where we drilled to the top. They had a hauled water storage tank at their um, garage up top where the bedrock is what I've been told outcropping in certain spots that produces little to no water. Uh, so you go down the hill, it's connected to a vein that ties into Acton Lake from what I've been told and our well flowed 350 gallons a minute roughly. We did it out of a five gallon bucket. So give or take, it was a lot of water over the top. Um, out of the six or seven wells I've drilled, that's definitely the most that it's, uh, that the ones that I personally drilled that it's flowed. What I will do is I will contact a lot of my friends in the industry for um, information. Um, guys like Watson Well Drilling who deal with these on a regular basis, they're my go-to. I'm not going to remember all the formulas and mud weights and what you do here, what you do there, what you drill, how you stop, um, what it drills like. You know, even down to how it drilled was a piece of advice Jim Watson gave me and Rob as we were drilling. You know, it's not a, like your conventional sand and gravel drilling, so that helped a lot. You know, I, I probably would not have thought twice about that going into it, but knowing that they know would be my go-to. Um, and, and then just kind of micromanaging everything, you know. Uh, we didn't get too far ahead of ourselves drilling. It was more of a step-by-step -step process, ensuring that our weights were, the mud scale was a lifesaver. We had two of them there. They were able to weigh the concrete, how much it weighed versus how much our mud weighed. Um, so that was a very valuable tool in drilling that well. Um, and like I said, it, uh, a, lot of, a lot of different hands went into that project, which, you know, moving forward, you know, it's always been a dream of mine to have a multi-state show. You know, I'd love to join up with a lot of the surrounding states, make a Midwest, whatever, and still name to be determined, per se. Um, but to get involved with, with that and get a lot more hands-on training within the industry. Um, so... Going back to what's all involved, you know, the down the tents, the band, uh, we had, uh, shoot, there was stuff I don't even remember. I wasn't even involved with a lot of it with a lot of the association ladies took care of that. Um, but uh, it was unique working with a bunch of different companies on one project. So um, I, would, I would definitely like to see that grow in the, in the, in the future with different states, you know, get different states involved. It was a unique one with different companies, let alone different states. Really cool, I mean, besides the geology and all the drilling uh, lingo that, um, well, a couple really neat things that I'd like to point out of this show. One, a uh, good friend of mine, Ryan Bouchon, played with the band Tuesday night. Uh, a couple of his tracks are out on the music apps, whatever, but, um, I thought that was very unique and very cool, played with Dan Wallace. Uh, the second was, not only were the Mud Angels cool, and they, they were an awesome fundraising opportunity for our, our scholarship, I believe it netted twenty-three or $2,500 to the scholarship fund straight away. Um, stuff like that is, uh, needs to be more prevalent in the industry, not only in Ohio, but throughout the nation. You know, that it, it um, 
one thing we've been trying hard to do is grow that scholarship account and I, and all the work in the six seven years i've been active on the board again here lately hasn't hasn't grossed that much in one pot um with that being said the mud angels were sweet that was three generations of of drillers um jim watson robbie watson and alex watson all got down and basically ruined a pair of clothes just for the the scholarship fund and um so the the cool part the uniqueness of the mud angels brought together three generations of of drillers in one pile of mud that i guess i got to create so uh, I, I wish that there there would have been more maybe we do more generational mud angels in the future um but uh, i know i'm a third generation driller i had my son out there who would have been a fourth generation um but at the same time it's it's cool to see younger people back around into it. So, and back out to the drilling side of it, it uh, I was essentially the puppet that was pulling the levers in, in the show, to call it like it was. It was, I didn't do anything out of the ordinary that I was not instructed to do by a guy that knows how to do these. I would suggest that moving forward, if you get into something you don't normally do, that's a great route to take. You know, it's, I don't know if anybody noticed, Rob and I were talking quite a bit during the drilling that, hey, do I need to go faster, go slower, this, that, the other. Yeah, not normally. I was in geo for close to 10 years and that's all it is, is fast. This, everything on this process was done intentionally, you know, to, to breaking it loose, to getting it to flow, to developing up, to stopping it was all an intentional game plan put together by a whole group of guys. Uh, girls too, but sorry. <laughs> People, nothing was just, okay, let's see if this happens. Everything done was intentional by the book, the groundwater resource books, the, you know, the groundwater and wells books, anything you can get your hands on to further educate on, on certain things. I don't claim to know all of it, and I, and I never will, and I don't drill in that many different parts of the state. Um, we kind of get into our own protective little bubble sometimes and don't look outside the box, but that was eye-opening for me to be able to work with five different drilling companies pretty smoothly. You know, it's most of the time you, you're, you guys are the competition, but it was cool to come together as, as friends for a two-day period. The, the difference in technique was something I'm not, you know, used to doing as far as down here. We turn the compressor on and... You know, once it starts making a little water, you back it down and, and go that route until it clears up. And, you know, there's definitely little nuances and tricks that I'm not saying I was privy to, but um, it was fun to learn from somebody who does it all the time. And that's, uh, the you know, another, I think, a silver lining of, of actually participating as a worker in that show was... You know, I, I don't do things like Rob does. Rob doesn't do things like I do, but I will definitely take certain aspects of what he showed me moving forward and try to apply it down here. You know, one, what we did with the flushing the mud out first, um, I've never done that down here. I tried it the other day, you know, just to try it. It's, it's something that... If you're not continuing to learn in this industry, you're probably going to be stuck back in, the, you know, the 1980s, you know, and, and do things not up to speed today. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like to fall behind. So, you know, it kind of goes with if you micromanage something, you're, you're always trying to make that better. Um, with, with that being said, it, uh, it, it, was, it was a learning experience for me as well. You know, if, you take for for instance if they do 20 a year and I've done 60 in 20 years you know 20 plus years that's uh, we just don't get it very often down here so there may be some things that he gets into up there that uh, we deal with on a normal basis and um, Ryan and I are kind of in the same boat you know we we both drill around central Ohio he's more on the west side but like I said if somebody that does it every day tells me not to use it we're going to go conventional mud tub you know and we just had a four by three centrifugal, and uh, well, uh, back to some of the de construction details. We did set 10 inch PVC as well that a lot of people didn't see at the show. That was day one. So we went down Monday, set 
um, 10 inch PVC down to 30 feet. Per, per state code, you put in the 10 inch, you concrete it in. If that thing ever gets away from you, you put a piece of 10 inch on it, install it out. So then that way you can, you can work with it better. If that's flowing 350 gallon a minute over the top, you've created a, what Rob calls a tiger. You know, so uh, I won't go into the rest of the, the uh, nicknames and, and side notes he's got for him, but that tiger did not get away from us that day. It, uh, everything went as good as it could have drilling well, and I know everybody out there understands exactly what I'm saying. So it got, it got from beginning, middle to end. Yeah, so moving forward this year, I know I'd, I could probably ramble on about the outdoor show for a couple hours because it, uh, it was fun. It just lacked better terms. It was the most fun vacation I've had all year, <laughs> outside of family ones. But uh, moving forward this year, what the Ohio Water Well Association is planning is an indoor conference in November. Um, the hope with that is to associate some of the local attractions around the Hilton at Polaris. Um, there's been talks, just sheerly talks, of incorporating a Top Golf event. Um, we're hoping to have a lot more equipment in, uh, sit in the parking lot, and maybe some more demos, not drilling wise, but um, kind of like a touch a truck type. Come here, look and see what this has got a pump hoist. We're, we're always welcome to. If anybody's got a drill rig, manufacturer suppliers that want to bring them, there we have the room for it. Um, a lot more educational talks inside, then you know, just uh, more learning opportunities. As what as association wide, we're trying to create um, more of your family of learning type experience. You know, it's um, it's not so much that the CEUs are are they're a requirement now, so. That doesn't mean we can't learn outside of a CEU. There's not like say there's always stuff you can learn. Sometimes you learn what not to do. I mean, to be quite honest with you, there is times that you're not going to take out of an educational session that this is what I'm going to do. It it may be very well that you walk out of there going, I am not doing that. You know, I, I can't, I won't, and I can't do it. Um, but you know, it's uh, going to be very similar to last year's show. Um, the, the details are, are still in the works. I believe we have a uh, conference this week yet about getting some more info out. There will be a lot more info to follow. Kind of taking a two or three week siesta from the uh, rigors of the outdoor show. It, it, uh, you know, we've, I've been involved with, I think, four indoor shows now, and the outdoor one was definitely the most taxing. And I don't know if it was because everybody all eyes are on you type deal, but. Um, just continuing on with the same deal. We're the indoor, or not indoor, the silent auction, we should have something like that. Um, there will be a brief recap of the outdoor show at the, at the indoor show. Um, and then moving forward, just, you know, hoping to see everybody there. And, and I, I learn more from talking to other people than I do sitting there listening to a professor tell me how to do calculus. And to be honest with you, most of my knowledge has been in the field and talking to like-minded professionals um so and you know anything drilling wise that that i can add to it everybody's already done anyway so <laughs> it's just a matter of uh, getting happy with your own self and 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 your own drilling knowing your rig you know it, i wish i was joking about micromanaging a rig but you know it's when you know your rig from up one side down the other, you can deliver a better product. And it's, I, I won't know your rig, you won't know mine, but um, yeah, trying to keep up with the educational stuff. Some legislative is going to be taking a front seat here in the near future. Um, it's not, it's in the back of everybody's mind right now. The rules revision, I believe is 26 is when it comes to, so. There'll be some talks of um, some of the rules and this, that, and the other, and more of a legislative approach, I'd say. But yeah, it's a typical indoor show. Hopefully, hopefully, see a lot of people there and hang out at the fire pit again or at Top Golf or something like that. But I'm going to try to associate a lot of that local attraction there at Polaris. Right? We got a lot of good feedback in that place last year.